So another little drink you drink. I did the rock and roll, rock on, ooh, my soul. I did the boogie too, did ya? Hey, shout, a summertime blues. Jump up and down in your blue suede shoes. I don't know why this song came to my head, but it did. Rock on. And where do we go from here? This is the way they still looking for that blue jean, baby queen. Prettiest girl I've ever seen. See her shake on the movie screen, Jimmy Dean. I rock on. You know, when I was growing up, you had some white boys had some funky songs, you know, so we got into that. Back when I was playing music, you had to be able to play everybody's songs if you wanted to work. Now these boys play what they want, and they get they get gigs in New Orleans. They don't have to fight for their, their money the way we did back in the day. Back in the day, folks didn't want to give us our money, man. We had to act a fool. Man, it was it was just ridiculous. Um, Karina, you remember the old Devil's Den? Right off of Tulane and um, I guess it was Banks and and um, Galvis. Worst gig I ever did. We played that that joint the Saturday before Easter, and dude didn't want to pay us, but. <clears throat> That's what was happening back then. People did that. They got away with it. If I, if I could collect money from every gig that I played where I didn't get paid, I'd probably be making a little bit more towards the time retirement. I have a nice little nest egg. So how y'all doing, people? Uh-oh, 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 fam in the house. Nikki, Nick, what's up, baby? How you doing? How you doing? My eyes are glassed over. Uh, I usually don't drink sweet drinks, but today I made me a um, I made me a. Let me see. I sign in this other thing. I made me a margarita, and joint was a little strong, because that's the way we do what we do. Because I'm from New Orleans, it ain't my fault. So I'm a, uh, before I get started, while I'm waiting for people to come in and take their seat, I just want to say a small um, shout out to Jim Brown. We love Jim Brown. Um, one of the people I kind of looked up to because of the way he went to fight for, um, went to fight for Muhammad Ali. I thought that was cool. Um, and he just did that most of his, his lifetime. But he did have a fall from grace when he decided he would um, back Donald Trump. And I always say a lot of those guys that, um, that's, my, um, that's my last song. Um, a lot of the guys that hung out with Trump back in the day felt like he was the same person that they hung out with. And I say the Donald Trump that you guys used to party with is not the Donald Trump who ran for office because when he ran for office you got to see the true person you know he um, you got to see the racist Donald Trump you got to see how he really felt about us so a lot of times those people that he he I say put up with but they were entertaining him, he looked at them as that, just the work. So he didn't look, he never considered them equal. But he was smart enough to play both sides of the fence. Hey, y'all. Well, you two people got in the house early this, tonight. I went online and um, I wanted to make sure that my YouTube was tight. So you two people, where you at? Little, hey, 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 I see you. Hey, you. Hey, y'all. I see that. Y'all give me a, I'm going to look periodically and see if I'm having any problems with sound or otherwise. 
I talked to my internet provider. I won't say their name because I'm not giving them a shout out. But I talked to them about some of the issues that I was having with my Wi-Fi and, and trying to get this. Okay, sounds good. That's a big 10 for. Okay. Let me see. Let me turn out some of these. Um, turn out some of these notifications. Otherwise, I'm gonna have people buzzing in. I can't get on that. Don't know how I work all day. When will I learn? My memories get in the way, and I walk around. I can't hear some folks talking loud and I early one sun. I feel like a little music tonight. Some of the earliest shows that I recorded was actually reclaimed by Warner Brothers because if you remember when I first started my show three years ago, I decided that I would use Express Yourself as my theme song coming on. And um First, I was shocked to find out that um, he's still living. And secondly, that somebody came as a little nobody like me and said that I was using the music yeah, without permission. So they could have that part of it. You know, watching those old shows, I was just learning my craft. And some of the shows looked like... Um, they were as hard as watching paint dry, so be that as it may, they could have the shows. You know, I, I've gone on, I've, I've grown, I'm doing bigger and better things. And um, so tonight, we had a couple of things. I keep saying I had in my mind this 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 vision of doing a six part series of shows that I call taking it back to the begin, beginning. Good evening. How you doing? How you doing? Um, taking it back to the basics, trying to get back to a time when family was the most important thing, especially in our community. When I look at it from whence we came, I look at a time where all we had was each other. So we had to bond together, we have to be cohesive, we have to pull together through adversity, and we celebrated each other's good, and we co consoled each other through each other's bad. So when I look at where we are, especially in this, this modern day, I call it um, social media mishap, it's this ongoing reality show, if you will. And I always Say when I look at a reality show, whose life is that? Who lives like that? Because it's not indicative of anybody that I know or how anybody that I know wants to live. I will say that people have gotten more, the word that my mom's used to, generation used to use was common. The irony was my mom's used to say if common sense was common, people wouldn't do the silly things that they do. But common was used, the definition of common on the street was people that didn't act like they had, quote unquote, home training or common sense. So with that being said, today I posed a couple questions. Before I do that, though, I want to give, like I said, a, a small shout out to Jim Brown, we lost him. And then on uh, yesterday, we lost Tina Turner as well. So um, that um, was on purpose. When I look at Tina and her life and all of the things she did, I'm reminded of just overcoming adversity. I, I've seen pictures, and I started to put together this pictorial and I decided against it of her from the uh, Tina, supposedly from the age of 16, 17, up until her last public appearance. 
And I decided I wouldn't do that right here, right now. So um, with that being said, I want to say rest in peace. It appears that those people that we endeared and we looked up to are dropping like flies now. So uh, with that, I want to say good evening and welcome to the show. My name is Hank Batiste. The show is Omit the Logic. This is Omit the Logic. We take current and life events, we break them down, and we try to make it make sense. I'm your host tonight, and I always talk about the voices in my head. The voices in my head are saying he's a complicated man, and no one understands him but his mother, and she's not here no more. But jokingly, I make jokes about that because I've always been my own person. I never follow the crowd. I've always done what I felt was right. So before I start any show, I always say each and every week, thank you for being here. I've been doing this show for three years now. And the one thing that has been consistent throughout the three years is you. Some of you have come and gone and some of you have watched me week in, week out. And I always say all of the things that you could be doing on a Thursday night, the fact that you choose to come here, watch me and listen to my analysis of current events and some of the things that don't make sense and try to make sense of them, it just humbles me. For that, I always want to start my show off by saying thank you. Before I go any further, I want to remind you guys my show is being broadcast simultaneously on YouTube. What I started doing last week is I started doing a, a little after show question and answer with the people that's on YouTube. And it kind of came to me. I felt like I, I need to give them something extra. So go to my YouTube channel. It's simply that omit O M I T D A L O G I C omit the logic. Sign up subscribe, give me some thumbs up, and then ring the bell. Then you'll be notified when I put new content on the channel. When I think about where we are, I posed two questions this morning. Like I said, I saw this six-part series in my head, and I tried to envision all of the things that are wrong with us. And let me just kind of preface that by saying there's no right or wrong. But all the things that we're least tolerant about that I think that have has led us astray from the strong families that we once were, the strong families that we once had, the extended families and the community, community families that made us stronger. And I always talk about the New Orleans I grew up in with doesn't exist anymore. I also say that before there was the internet, my mom had a network because people knew you that you didn't know. And you'd be out there acting a fool and some lady would open the door and she'd say, all right, little Henry, now you know your mama witness it, you don't know me. And when she would call my mom by my mom's first name, I say, oh, snap. That probably means that she knows the number too. And back in the day, we had letters, a word, in numbers. So your number might be like Jackson 56285 or White House 36783, something like that. So <laughs> before you could get home, there was a message that beat you home. And you know you had messed up when your mom was waiting on the front porch for you. And she said something like, come here, young man. So you just didn't got beside yourself, huh? Now you know, no, no, ma. Well, why didn't you? You'd have to walk the two or three blocks back to where you came from and say hello to Miss Elma, Miss Eola, whomsoever it was that you somehow disrespected by acting a fool in the street. Brought all of that up because I said, um, I decided to take up some of these serious issues. I say undertake some of these serious 
issues. And I use that as a pun because some of these things seem like they've already got its final right. It's a lofty goal, the things we're talking about when we talk about us as a people. And let me just say, I don't profess to be an expert because Lord knows I'm an imperfect man. But the one thing that I do care about, the one thing that I really mean is I, I do what I do from the heart. So if I come up short, so be it. But if I just resonate with one person and that person takes it on to another person, then it becomes perpetual and it's kind of chain reaction. How do we get back to basics? Just loving and accepting each other without ulterior motives and and negating the outside influences of the social media motivated world um, of whatever's popular now. How do we do that? To this effect, tonight we're talking about two things. I posted one of the questions is a spinoff from last week. Last week I asked if anybody had given up on dating. If if so, then how were they dealing with things like their sexuality or those sexual urges that they had? And I asked about pleasuring oneself versus um, having friends, friends with benefits to kind of scratch that itch when you have it. What I... When I posted the question, a couple people came to me and said it was irrelevant. And I said, no, it's very much relevant because those that know me know that I spent 12 years in D.C. managing the radiology department in Bethesda. And my duties went far beyond the radiology department at the Naval Hospital. I had the honor of working with the who's who in federal government in DC back then, at a time when I was young enough to be influenced and old enough to be confident enough to do the job better than what was expected of me. So I asked the question and somebody said it was irrelevant. And I says, no, it's very relevant because to those people who habitually please themselves, it, you get to a point where you know how to touch your own spot and what have you, and you have an advantage because nobody knows what you're feeling. So when somebody comes into your life, they can do for you what you can do for yourself. So it becomes a, a self-defeating Exercise, if you will. This is important in how this brings back to NNMC, a National Naval Medical Center, is because at the time I was placed on a, on a committee with then Surgeon General Joycelyn Elders. And for whatever reason, I don't know if it was by design, and this was the reason I was placed on this committee, or what? But Dr. Elders took to me and she she took me under a wing and she had me do some things and she helped to develop me professionally. But she got herself into trouble because at the time the powers to be was preaching abstinence. And Dr. Elders said, Well, if you get the urge, then you, you know, it's okay to masturbate or pleasure yourself. And for those of you who are my age and old enough to remember, it wind up being the thing that, the statement that brought her down and ended her career as Surgeon General. So that's one thing. Other thing I wanted to talk about, or the other question that I posed was, are there really as many deadbeat dads or are there some a lot of what I call bitter baby mamas. 
So those were the two things I, I thought about, and those are the two things that I'm going to talk about mostly. But I want to take a little sidebar track, if you will, because when I think about how our children are impacted by the decisions we make, I see things, and I'm just reminded of this whole Ja, this Ja Morant, this young man who is so talented, but he can't seem to stay out of trouble when it comes to brandishing a, wep a weapon or a gun. So I want to talk about that just for a second because I kept saying, and a couple of people say it's because he doesn't have a male in his life. A recent thing happened today. One of the current events of the, of the day was they did a wellness check because he made these, he posted these four cryptic messages that sounded like he was ready to do something silly. A week or so ago, I posted, this is what the face of mental health really looks like. And I was talking about the things that he was doing being a cry for help. And somebody actually felt that way. In his one of his posts, he says, bye, mom, bye, pop, and bye, baby girl, you are the best. So I was kind of bewildered because bye, pop. If the dad was in his life and had any kind of influence, it seemed like he would be the most likely person to talk to Ja and say, Ja, look, you've worked too hard to get where you are. These people that you call friends are not really your friends. If you're doing something and they decide to film you and go live while you're doing what you're doing. So on one hand, when you're famous and you're carrying around or you're traveling in these kind of entourages, it's an attraction for those people that want to rob, want to whatever, whatever. So I could understand someone wanting to protect themselves. If this person was a so-called bodyguard or whatever, or if this person is, is jealous of this young man, it seems like his dad would have stepped in and said, you need to change your inner circle because these are not friends of yours. It doesn't mean that he's going to listen. but. It goes back to what I'm saying. If there's a relationship from an early age between uh, a child and his dad, a boy and his father, then I, I would hope, wish, and pray that it would see some of this bad behavior. I would hope, wish, and pray that it would be the answer to so many of these young men being so damn trigger happy and not knowing how to deal with adversity or anger other than pulling a weapon. And then I was I posted the thing of the so-called friend who shot a friend over a LeBron Michael GOAT debate. Now you know, if you know me, you know nobody talks more trash than me. I talk more shit than a latrine. So if every time I said something that got under somebody's skin, somebody was pulling a weapon on me, it truly would be me against the world. But I love me some LeBron. I do. I like LeBron because he takes care of his family openly, and he stands up for social justice. So he's trying to be the Jim Brown. But what you have to remember is LeBron and, and Ja, and I use them because they're contrasting examples, if you will. LeBron came into the league at the age of 18, a multi-million dollar millionaire, before he dribbled any basketball in the NBA. And every year, his income 
his socioeconomic status and influence has gone up. But I beat up LeBron because with all the God-given talent he has, he's never learned how to be coach. He, it, it appears that no one can tell him something. So when you're driving the gravy train, when you're the one who has the funds that make the gravy train run, who do you listen to? Then I'm reminded of Shaq. When Shaq came out of LSU and he had so much promise, and I use Shaq because the person that Shaq was when he retired was basically the same person that Shaq was when he came into the league. And I use these examples because if no one can critique you, no one can criticize you. If no one can criticize you, no one can coach you. If no one can coach you, then no one can teach you. So it becomes a never-ending cycle. So I hope that makes sense to you guys. When you got a 20-ish, multi-million dollar brand, he's no longer a person. So everybody that comes to him is pulling his shirt tail for something. So I could understand it understand the walls going up and being skeptical and getting to the point where he or she just not want to listen anymore. So I understand, but somewhere there has to be someone that can pull a shirt tail. And I say dads because um, my mom, and I'm going to say this time and time and time again, and you'll probably hear it again before the night is over. My mom was the quintessential philosopher. Try as she might, my mom cannot teach me to become a man. Simply because there were so many things I felt as an adolescent and a young man that my mom just could not understand these feelings. And I've always been popular long before there was social media. So I'm not fascinated. I'm not swayed by this false sense of you're the shit. So I could halfway imagine what some of these kids feel like. Playing music in New Orleans, modeling for D.H. Holmes, doing dinner theater and stuff like this. I've always been popular. So on that smaller scale, I could just imagine because the trouble I got myself into, it wasn't brandishing a, a gun. Yeah, I bought my first two guns when I was 18. But I didn't, there was nobody with cameras to catch me when I did something silly. Because in New Orleans, every New Year's Eve, we would go outside and we would shoot. So what if someone was, 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 was taping me when I was doing something silly like shooting out the street light and not even thinking how dangerous that was because in my young, immature mind or where that bullet was coming down, if I missed, all I thought about was, A, everybody does it, B, it's fun. And C, sadly, they admit there was alcohol on board. So these kids are living in a, in a time where everything they, done, they do is under a microscope. It is what it is. But there has to be somebody to step in. That's all I got to say about that. Self-pleasure. I made the reference to former Surgeon General. If this woman says something, now, the other reason I brought this up is because somebody came into my, my inbox, two or three people did, actually, and said, hey, bro, you went too far. Why are you asking people about how, whether or not they masturbate, and why is that even your business? I'm like, well, if the Surgeon General can give this advice to teenagers, and people are dressing half-naked and talking about 
who can get it? And saying something as graphic as silk from the butthole to the navel and all this other stuff. And women talking about sucking the souls out of men. How could what I act when I'm asking it for a specific purpose, be so bad. So um, Lauren said it was inconsequential. And how I responded to her, I said what I said earlier. One of the things that came up with the Joyce and the Elders was they said that if kids get accustomed to doing this, when they did have a sexual experience, it would pale by comparison because they were so used to being with themselves and by themselves. So that's the way I saw it. If you're so busy pleasing yourself, how can somebody else step in? Then Laureen and two other people addressed, let me take that back, two other women because none of my brothers stepped up to the plate and said nothing. So Laureen, always know that Laureen is going to respond. A, she's like a little sister to me. B, she's just, I call her incorrigible, but she's so freaking lovable, you can't get mad at her. Um, she says, Yes, she does. And she says she would teach her lover how to please her and then expect him to teach her how to please him in return. And I thought that was profound. But I said, in my mind, I don't mind learning where your spot is. That's something that I want to learn. But when I'm doing what I do to you, I'm going to be watching for little telltale signs. And when you say woo, or when you start to tremble, by God, I think that might be the spot. Not rocket science. Now, if you're one of those women that don't say nothing and you're quiet, man, I probably won't have a re repeat visit anyway. Cause I want, I want something to motiv motivate, cheer brother on, you know. Okay, enough, enough, enough. <laughs> to the second question about the deadbeat dads versus, shut up you. <laughs> I can see my people on YouTube. I knew it was coming. I knew it was coming. I know who's going to do what. To the second question of the deadbeat dad versus the let me get my hair back. Debbie Dad versus the bit of baby mamas, Laureen said, in some cases, men become fathers unwillingly. She went on to say that's why she taught her son, regardless, use condoms. But she also admit that some women use their children to exact revenge on the former lover when the relationship doesn't work out. And it's always better coming from a woman. Because when I say it, somebody will say, well, you just don't like women. Uh, no, nothing is further from the truth. There might be some women that lie and say I've been with them. There might be some women that say this, that, or the other. But one thing nobody could ever say is that I was with a damn man. You know what I'm saying? So and here's the other thing. I can't be with all women, so, okay, no, it's not about me. But I understand what that is, because at an early age, I started spreading my Johnny Apple seed, and before I know it, I had planted trees in several different orchards, if you will. Unfortunately, this was commonplace in this place, in this New Orleans that I grew up in. Unfortunately, this was in spite of my mom telling me, son, these girls know that you're not going to be standing on the street corner. So they're trying to get their bid in now. Protect yourself. So just like Laureen, my mom told me some of those things. So I would say to Laureen and all of the mamas out there, you may very well be trying to teach your sons this, but in the heat of a moment, 
if that girl say, if you do this, then you can have that. He gonna do this, that, this. You can get with this. You can get with that. Hey, ho. Hey. He's going to do what she said. And all that advice you gave him, and probably me too, let's be honest about it, is going to go right out the window. Because his hormones are raging, and something is telling him that this is the price of admission. And he's willing. So, it is what it is. Vanessa was the second person. And Vanessa says self-pleasure is a substitute when you don't have anyone in, in your life. She agreed with Laureen that it's good to pleasure oneself and even to teach your, your partner how you like things. Okay. I'm just going to take that one. I'm, I'm going to listen to that. Two women say it. Nah, okay. Then she said, there are a lot of deadbeat dads and a few deadbeat moms. I listen to that. A lot of deadbeat dads and a few deadbeat moms. Hmm. Well, not putting mamas down, but if mamas have the child and mamas are on crack or doing whatever they have to do or doing what they want to do, in spite of being a mom, the child is going to love him regardless. Dad, on the other hand, dad has to walk a chalk line made of eggshells and do everything perfectly. But not only mom's definition, but everybody in that family. Because everybody's going to have something to say about it. It is what it is. So a lot of deadbeat dads and a few deadbeat moms. Hmm, okay. But she ignored the definition of bitter mama. Then Vanessa went on to say, she ended by saying, I will never understand why folks have to be responsible or why folks can't be responsible for the life they created. Because things didn't happen simply the way they thought they should have. So in the purest of intentions, things fall apart. And Vanessa is saying that at one person or the other backs out of the, real, the relationship and a responsibility to the other person that ultimately is going to affect how the child sees life. Then L said definitely, definitely. Definitely someone can please her as well, if not better than how she pleases herself. She said, physical connection over release, quote unquote. And she put that word in quotation marks. Physical connection over release is it. And somehow, she says, and, and define someone who does both as a win and nothing beats that. I can't touch that. I can't touch that. Um, I'm not going to talk about my own feelings because I just, I've done enough sharing on my own. To the subject of, of the question of deadbeat dads versus bitter baby mamas, L says people are bitter because of unrealistic expectations and not taking accountability for their own actions. But that all I can say was woo woo. That's the problem. That's the problem. And I'm guilty of that as well. Because when I was young, like I said, she looked good. I looked good. She was having fun. I was having fun. I like to believe that one or two of those girls was not planning on getting pregnant. She's just caught up in the moment and having fun because we were having fun together. And when things happened and when things went haywire, now it's no longer just me and a girl. 
is her parents, and usually it's the mom. And what I didn't realize until later in life, a lot of times the mom pushed their own issues onto the daughter. I said what I said. So if the mom had somebody who reminded her, or I reminded them of, then she pushed that on to the daughter and said, he ain't shit because blase, blase, blase. And I've been with like that before. So um, what I really like about what Elle said, she closed out with this. She says, people drag that foolishness from one person to the next. I said, bingo. This wind up being the family Jews that we pass down from generation to generation to generation to generation. And that's sad because when you poison a child's mind with the mistakes that you made or the life lessons that you should have learned, then you don't give them a chance to develop their own. You want to guide them. You don't want to push them into a place that you felt once upon a time, or I think. Lastly, Audrey said no. People can, no one could please her the way she pleases herself. She said, but they do come close. They've come close. The problem is they either don't care or they think they're geniuses and they still don't get it. Now, if you know Audrey, Audrey is, is <laughs> raw, unadulterated, straight, no chaser, and no filters. So it is what it is. When I think about the whole deadbeat dad thing, I asked myself a couple questions. First of all, I asked myself, is this something that we learn from our white slave owners? Is this something that we, we, we had to learn because we created life and that life could be taken away from us? So I look at these young men who want to be a dad and they're denied access to their child and they have to learn how to cope with that. So they move on with their lives. And now the kid grows up hearing, your pa was never there, he ain't shit. So I'm not making excuses, but it's something, this is an example that was made for us. The whole dead be dad thing, think of all of the slave masters that created children and, and never. We're not even talking about reparations. The only slave master I know that took care of his kids was Thomas Jefferson. And I saw that firsthand. And that's all I got to say about that. Um, <laughs> the second thing I ask myself is does welfare cause this problem? Because there was a time, I think the closest we came to being a community and I'm old enough, and you're old enough to remember this was the 70s, because we had people looking out for each other. We had programs with even the knuckleheads in the street. Nine out of 10 times, if you had talent, you didn't just represent yourself and your family. You represented the neighborhood. So nine out of 10 times, you walked the street of, with impunity because nobody touched you. Everybody knew that you had a certain amount of talent or that you were going somewhere. Versus today, a world where jealousy rules and who you think you are, you think you're better than other folks. So I don't know. But when I think about welfare, this was one of the social programs that was supposedly designed to bring us up. But the only way that a family could get help is if the dad was not in the picture. And it was one of the reasons why my mom did not, would not go for it, even after she and my dad separated and divorced. First of all, my dad 
sent my mom money in addition to the alimony or whatever he had to pay. Second of all, we got allowances on a daily, I mean, on a weekly basis. And when my dad passed, my mom got a check, I got a check, and my sister got a check from public service, from my dad's pension. That world doesn't exist anymore. Even though my mom had not been with my dad, my mom and dad had been divorced for years, my mom never remarried. Another thing. Then I think about these women that my mom was talking about. These women who purposefully use pregnancy or motherhood as a way of coming up economically. And then I think about those women who secretly choose a, a baby daddy based upon physical attributes, good hair, a pretty eye, a certain complexion. I lost my dad when I was 15, just short of my 16th birthday. My mom never had an ill word to say about my dad, and my dad never had an ill word to say about my mom. Honestly, me and my sister used to talk about my mom and dad, and I say, if they get along so well, why don't they just get back together? And at that young age, I didn't understand that they could still love each other, but not be in love with each other. But the one thing that they loved more than anything was making sure that we had a place where we could grow up without all of that drama. And what was crazy for me is I expected to have that kind of relationship with a woman, whether we made it or not, especially if we didn't make it. I wanted to have someone who would be, still be my number one cheerleader when it came to my son or my daughter and saying, hey, look, your dad may not be here, but your dad's out there busting his behind so that you will have. Because those were the things that my mom said. doesn't exist. So when I'm talking about getting back to basics, I'm not throwing shade. I'm not pointing fingers. I'm not stepping on toes because there's definitely enough to go around. But when I see my son, when I see your son and your son and your daughter and your grandchildren be subjected to this nonsense, I say, I might not have the answers, but I certainly have a voice. And I'm going to shake things up. So as we move into June, and we start to look at Father's Day, I got one request of every single mama. You already had your month. It was called Mother's Day. Why you need another bite out the apple? Well, I might as well take Father's Day too, because this car ain't never been there. And blah 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 blah. I'm the mama and the daddy. There's a medical term for that, and I just won't go into it here. If you're bu built with two sexual organs, there's a medical term for that. So. Moving forward, as we look at ourselves getting back to basics and relearning how to love each other in spite of ourselves, in spite of our insufficiencies and our imperfections and so forth and so on, let's put our own feelings aside and let's think about the children, the daughters, the sons the grandson, the granddaughter, and those people, those little people, and who they're going to be in five or 10 years. 
regardless to what you've been through, you overcame. You've been delivered. So I look at it as the same, with the same analogy that I use on these young sports heroes. If you can't be critiqued, you can't be coached. If you can't be coached, you can't be taught. If you can't be taught, then you can't teach your kids the right way. That's all I got for you tonight. As always, before I sign off, I want to remind you one more again. Go to my YouTube channel, sign up, Omit the Logic, O-M-I-T-D-A-L-O-G-I-C, Omit the, phonetically how we say it, Omit the Logic. Sign up, subscribe, give me a thumbs up, leave me some positive words, ring the bell, and then share it. Share it with some other people. And I will see you here next week. Same bad teeth time, same bad teeth place. As I always say, don't be so afraid to die that you forget to live for a purpose. Because the one thing about this game called life, nobody leaves alive. So it's always important. I wish you love. I wish you peace, two fingers to the sky. And like your man, Agri, I'm out of here, people. Love you to death. Love you to death. Love you to death. Ain't a damn thing you could do about it, but love me back. It's so good loving you and you and you. And your ass got to love me back. And that's a fact. Good night, people. Yeah, I'm tripping. Said now, say I'm at 30, not 60, 40. I'm talking about a 50, 50 love. But you know, Teddy got that wrong. You too? Teddy got that wrong. Yeah, I said that. John Legend got it right. All of you for all of me. Because the piece that you're holding back might be the piece that I need. So don't hold back on me. Give me all of that. All of that. All of that, because all of you wants all of me. <laughs> so how'd that go?